All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today's video, we're gonna talk about training fig trees. This is, in my opinion, really the most important topic related to any plant, not just figs, but if we can train our fig trees or any of our plants properly, have them have the right form, they're gonna be able to maximize sunlight, right? Even when we plant annual vegetables, we wanna have the right spacing. We wanna plant things in a way that are getting the most amount of sunlight possible because plants above everything else really need that sunlight. And the difference between having less sunlight and even just a little bit more sunlight will create an exponential difference that maybe you don't see right away on your plants, but you will see this by the end of the season. It is just really the most important thing for any plant. And in the case of the fig tree, without enough sunlight, our fig trees just will not fruit. Every fig actually needs a certain intensity and duration of sunlight to set the fruit buds along the new branches. And it has to be growing. As the tree is growing, it has to get that sunlight requirement met. Otherwise, you just won't see any fruits. And so every year I get this in the fall or in the summer. And the answer really starts now in the spring. But people are always like, Ross, I just can't get my fig tree to fruit. It's so big, it's beautiful, it grows really well, it's healthy, but it just doesn't fruit. What's the problem? And almost always the answer is sunlight. Just not enough. But it's not enough to just say, oh, they don't have enough sunlight in their particular location. Really what's happening is that their tree is just typically too dense. There's too many leaves in their canopy. There's too many branches, crisscrossing branches, branches growing in the wrong place. It's just a tree that's either pruned too much, pruned improperly, or not trained correctly. They're not staking their trees. They're not doing anything really that's helping the tree get more sunlight. And that's what we're talking about in today's video is really helping our fig tree maximize the amount of sunlight in a given area so that the tree can have the most photosynthesis, produce the most photosynthesis, or I guess produce the most carbohydrates possible. The more carbohydrates our trees have, the more fruits our trees will produce and the better tasting they'll be. So this is affecting everybody. And it's a no brainer. It's a thing that everybody wants to do. I just think in all honesty, this is the most important video that I will probably create all year. And it may probably only a couple thousand people will see it. But in reality, this is the one, if I could choose one of them to go viral, this would be it. So please, at this moment, I would love more people to hear my message in this video. Hit that like button for me right now. Hit that subscribe button for me right now. Check out my blog, figboss.com. I've already written a companion guide actually to this video about sunlight that's on the blog and the importance of sunlight. And I've also written an article about training our fig trees properly, whether they're in containers or in the ground. This will really help you guys out. And there is no better tip I can give you guys all season long. So let's talk about training them very quickly. And so you can train them, whether it's in a container or in the ground, there is really no difference. Whether you're in Alaska or, or Arizona, there is really almost no difference in the way we train them. We always want them to either be a bush or a tree. That's up to you. The difference between a bush and a tree is this main trunk down here. And so as a tree, we wanna have them grow as a single stem width, so one branch. And then from that one branch, we form the permanent scaffolds. And you can see here that there's one trunk that comes up from the soil line. We topped it, or you can prune it, you can break it off with your hand during the growing season, that's called pinching. And then it will actually start to branch out. And in this particular tree's case, it branched out into a V pattern or a Y, right? So the bottom of the Y is that main trunk. And then there's the V, which forms these scaffolds. So let me zoom in real quick. And you can just get an idea of what I'm talking about. Again, here's the soil line, main trunk. And then it branches out into a V and forms those scaffolds that we're talking about. So the difference between a bush and a tree, again, is that main trunk here. But the bush will just have the same scaffold set up, the same V basically, but it will start at the soil level. Does that make sense? So instead of having two scaffolds, let's say a foot and a half above the soil, the two scaffolds then start at the soil level. 
And so from there, again, there really is no difference. The way we train them, the way we treat them is no different. And so what we're trying to do in most cases is form the right number of scaffolds. That's really the name of the game. You want to have about two to five scaffolds in most situations. For older trees and trees in a lot more sunlight, maybe from sun up to sun down, you could get away with having more scaffolds than less scaffolds. If you want a lot of scaffolds, I would, I would make the argument, have longer scaffolds in length that reach further out to get that sun. So if we're gonna have seven to eight or more scaffolds, we wanna make sure that our tree is actually having longer scaffolds. And these longer scaffolds essentially are going to be able to reach more of that sunlight and create a wider canopy. The longer the scaffolds, so the longer this part of the V is, the further out away from the center of the tree, this whole system of branches I've created here will be. And so the further away this system of branches is from this system of branches, basically the wider the canopy is and the more light that our trees can reach. That's the name of the game. We're just trying to maximize this whole space here. And so you can already kind of tell probably from this tree because I only have two scaffolds. I really would like four. When I topped the tree originally to form the scaffolds, we did form four or five scaffolds actually, but only two of them grew healthy and achieved the dominance that they needed to continue growing and form the tree that you see today. But the two down here at the base or at this, the bottom of this V, they didn't grow very much, but they do exist. And so it would have been nice actually if I had a scaffold that grew out this way and then formed a whole system of branches towards you guys. And then another scaffold actually that formed the same thing but away from you guys. And so we're essentially picture this whole, if you saw the tree from the top, you wanna picture this whole thing as like a box or a big circle. And so that's kind of what a fig tree does. They eventually form a rounded crown. They're very different than other fruit trees in some cases, whereas other trees will form a central leader, right? Typical Christmas tree, grows straight up and then forms all these branches from that main leader. There is no real main leader on a fig tree. It just forms this rounded crown. So we're trying to get this rounded crown or a box, let's say, and we're trying to have each scaffold in this box, in the corner of each box. So if this system of branches right here, that's next to me, this is in one corner. Another corner would be right here. If there was a scaffold here. The other one's over there in that corner and the other one's away from you guys. Now, the wider your canopy is, think about it like this, the more light we can reach. So instead of having a box, maybe we can have like a, a pentagon or something or whatever this six sided shape is or seven sided shape. You know, the number of scaffolds will, I guess, of course, make a wider and different shaped box. <laughs> but that's, that's the point here is that once we get this V pattern, we form the permanent scaffolds, whether it's from the soil line or if it's from this main trunk that we grew, there's no real difference. The only thing we have to really pay attention to is just making sure we have the right number. And if we don't have the right number in this particular situation, I've only got two. What I'm noticing now, especially in this third year, this is actually the only thir the third year of this tree's life, is that we don't have enough we're not maximizing sunlight right here in front of the tree, and we're not maximizing sunlight behind the tree away from you guys. So what we can do, instead of actually just pruning the tree, is actually do staking. So I've already sort of done that, where we can take this branch here and move it actually towards this section here where my head is, where there is no growth and where we're just missing the sunlight hitting this area. The same thing behind it, we'll take stakes and do the same exact thing, there's actually a branch back here that is in the middle of this canopy. And so by moving the one in the middle or the branch that is crisscrossing or the branch that's growing in the wrong direction, as you can kind of get an idea here, there is a branch here, system of branches, another system of branches, another system of branches here. And then there's this one here right in the middle where this weird looking leaf is that has sunburn. If I take this branch and I move this this way, look at that. Now we've opened up the center. We also have this growth point here growing in this direction towards me. 
away from all the other growth points and filling up an area of the tree where again, there just is no, there's no, we're not making use of this space right here. Does that make sense? So that's the key, I think, to training any fig tree is not necessarily pruning it and pruning the heck out of it to you know, get it to bend to your will. In fact, with this tree here, I've done very minimal, if any, pruning on this. In most situations when I'm pruning or training my fig trees, excuse me, I don't really do much pruning. The main pruning I do is grow them out to a single stem whip and then top it right then and there during the growing season. That's what I found to make, to get the best form possible as quickly as possible, is actually to prune it in that first season to get the scaffolds to actually form in the first year from growing it, from cutting. That's possible and that will eliminate pretty much an entire year of training your fig tree. You can also do this in the second year in the winter time in dormancy. Right now in the spring, we can top our trees at any height that we want and form the scaffolds where we would like them. The lower we form our scaffolds, the smaller our tree will be and the less we have to worry about size control. The taller our tree is, we typically have a scaffold formation at a higher height. So a good rule of thumb is to form these scaffolds and top the tree at about knee height I like to go even lower and for me, I think topping is determined by the size of the leaves on that main stem or on any of the trunks from the base, whether it's a bush or a tree, it doesn't matter. Once the leaves get really big and the branches start growing really vigorously, top it right then and there during the growing season and it'll start branching out. It may even fruit from that point and you'll actually form the desired form, these scaffolds at an earlier date. Once we form the scaffolds, then we just kind of focus on from that point, forming these new branches that are the fruiting branches. And so that's the second year where last year I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you count the brown branches on my tree at this moment, the hardened lignified wood that's brown or gray maybe on your tree, those are the branches from last year that fruited. And now we're forming this green growth that also fruits, and this is what I would consider as well, the fruiting branches. On the new growth is where we form the main crop. That's the crop that everybody wants for the most part. Brebas are formed on last year's growth, and that could be something that you would wanna do as well. And that's a, sort of a different topic, but for the most part, the more of these fruiting branches we can form in a given area that are also achieving the right amount of sunlight, duration, and intensity, the better off we're gonna be. Because every single fruiting branch that forms, all that new growth that forms, as it's growing, has to get the right amount of sunlight duration and intensity in order for that fruit bud to form. Figs are very different than other fruit trees in that sense. The fruits are formed on the new growth. That's kind of, sort of rare, um, especially in the fig tree's case in the way that it continues to grow and continues to fruit. The grapevine, as an example, will fruit on new growth. Uh, mulberries will fruit on new growth, but typically you need growth from the prior season to have those fruit buds form and actually fruit, uh, fruit for you. But the fig doesn't really need this prior growth necessarily, although it is recommended. So, and it is just different in the way that it does fruit, but we're getting off topic. Once we form these fruiting branches that I counted eight or nine or 10 of them on this tree, and they all fruited last year, they all did well, they all grew in their own little respective space and tried to maximize as much light as possible. From there, now in the third season, which is what this tree is in, it's leafed out again in the spring. And now the tree kind of already knows what it's doing. It, it kind of already knows where to grow because we have established a form. The trees instinctively know where the sunlight is and they'll kind of grow into that sunlight. However, if we want to get really, really good with this, we're going to take our branches and we're going to stake them. We're not going to prune them away. We're going to stake these branches so that they can grow in the directions that we want them to. Every fig tree, guys, is a little different and they have different growth patterns. Some are very erect and will grow straight up in the air. The figs that grow straight up in the air and don't have more of a wider angle to their branches, I've grown hundreds of varieties, guys. Every variety is different, every fig tree is different. Even the same variety planted just a mile away is gonna be different. You need to have these branches on an angle. 
if they're growing straight up in the air, they're not gonna fruit, and you're gonna basically create all this internal shading here in your tree, you're basically shooting yourself in the foot. So what we have to do is not only do we have to kind of position them away from each other, open up this canopy a bit so that you can get more light in here, but if you put them on an angle, that essentially allows them to access more sunlight. Because if the tree, if the branch, if my arm is the branch, right? And the sunlight's hitting this branch, we're only really getting sunlight at the top of this branch. But if I turn the branch like this, now the sunlight's coming down and not just hitting the top, but it's also hitting all the way down my arm. It's just a no brainer. Wherever there's more sunlight, the fig tree is gonna appreciate that and make use of that and fruit more in those locations. So we need to basically, and I do this for every single fig tree I have. I spend a crap ton of money on stakes just to get the right form to open these trees up. And if you can do this, you can stake all your trees and get these branches away from each other to get this really nice form here that you see. This is the critical thing that you can do for any fig tree, for any fruiting plant. We have to focus on opening up that center staking rather than actually pruning and that basically right there guys is training fig trees in a nutshell having the right form maximizing that sunlight again if you enjoyed this video please hit that subscribe button hit the like button this really helps out the videos and then also check out the blog figboss.com again there's two companion guides to this video take care guys we'll see you for the next one